Hi everyone and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Rosana. Today we are making crispy rolled chicken tacos. These are also known as flautas or taquitos. These are very popular in Mexico and for a very good reason. They are delicious. Women actually make them to sell at night for a living. So you can imagine how good they are. But today we're actually gonna pair it with a warm, delicious consomme that's gonna take them to the next level. Before we get started, I do want to invite you to subscribe, like this video because it really does help this video reach more people. And also don't forget to click the notification bell so that you're notified and you don't miss out on a brand new video. All right, let's get started. Start by cooking two pounds of bone-in chicken breast. And we do want to keep that bone because it's going to give us a lot of flavor. To that, we're going to add six peeled garlic cloves one teaspoon of whole black peppercorns, about four sprigs of yerbabuena or mint leaves, a small bunch of thyme, and we want it fresh, half of a medium white onion, one jalapeno, and I'm gonna remove the stem, two Roma tomatoes, roughly diced, two carrots, they don't have to be perfect, and just add them in there. Lightly season it with one tablespoon of kosher salt and add enough water to cover and cook the chicken. You also want to have enough broth by the end, so I'm adding 10 cups of water. Oops, a piece of onion skin was trying to sneak in there. Let me just remove it and move on. Transfer the pot to the stove and let's bring it to a boil. It has finally reached the boil. Now we're gonna lower the heat to medium low. That way it cooks on a gentle simmer. So just wait for that to happen, then you can cover the pot. I'm gonna set the timer for 25 minutes because that's how long it's gonna take for the chicken to completely cook. If it doesn't, just let it go on for longer. The chicken is completely cooked, let's remove it. I just got a facial, look at all that steam. This is really hot, but we're gonna let it cool down before we handle it. Also remove the tomatoes, the onion, the garlic, you're gonna have to fish them out. <laughs> Lastly, remove the jalapeno. The broth is still hot, so we're gonna use it to cook 10 ounces of tomatillos. And I left them for last because these cook really fast. It'll take about five minutes for them to be fully cooked and soft. And covering the pot helps. Like I said, tomatillos are ready. They cook fast. That's a good thing. So just add them into the blender as well. And we're gonna allow these ingredients to cool down. Remove two cups of the broth. And set it aside, we're gonna need it later. We want it to cool down as well. The carrots and herbs are gonna stay in with the broth, which you're gonna continue to simmer until we need it. So I decided not to make a salsa for this recipe because we already have a beautiful tomatillo broth that's gonna flavor those taquitos. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm gonna pickle some red onions with peppers. That way we get that nice kick of heat. And I'm telling you, it is the perfect addition. I'm gonna be using three habaneros. I know this is gonna be super hot, but I couldn't resist. Look at those colors, they're so beautiful. And one jalapeno. Now, if you can't handle habaneros, do not worry about it. Just use jalapenos, you're gonna be fine. I'm gonna be wearing kitchen gloves because of the heat content and the peppers and the fact that we're going to remove the seeds from them. Now go ahead and thinly slice them. These pickled red onions are gonna be sweet, spicy, tangy. It's gonna be great. Thinly slice half of a large red onion. Mm -hmm. 
We're gonna need white wine vinegar and I just got this bottle yesterday. It's a brand new one. Measure out a quarter of a cup and pour it right into the bowl. This should be fun. I don't know if I can fit the lime into the squeezer. We're gonna try because we need a quarter of a cup of the lime juice. Look at that. <laughs> I may need you, Nelson, come on. <laughs> He's gonna help me out here. I, I, it's just too large. Come on, I need a quarter of a cup. You put so much faith in me. <laughs> okay, hold on. I gotta replay. They're huge. Yeah, I look. I went to the store yesterday and I tried to get the smallest I could find. It was not happening. This is the smallest. How much are we supposed to do? A quarter of a cup. Aren't we there yet? No, no, a little bit more, maybe like here. Okay, you cut the line. Maybe one more. Some more. And fit it in. <laughs> Do like half. Yes, and then the other half. Oh, okay. Oh, we're there. Yeah, good. Thank you. All right, now pour it into the bowl as well. This is gonna complement that white wine vinegar. They're gonna join forces. Add half a cup of water, one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of dry Mexican oregano, and we're gonna break it up in our hands carefully. and one teaspoon of kosher salt. Lastly, crack some white pepper in here. You can use black pepper as well. Mix everything to combine. It smells so good, I can smell that oregano. You do wanna allow this to marinate for at least 10 to 15 minutes before serving. I'm gonna cover it, place it in the fridge, and let it do its job. The longer they sit, the better they taste. We're ready to make the salsa. To the already cooled ingredients in the blender, add the two cups of the broth, two peeled garlic cloves, and a half of a bunch of fresh cilantro. Now go ahead and blend. Place a large pot over medium heat and add a couple of tablespoons of a smooth olive oil. When the oil is hot, carefully add the blended salsa. Okay, at this point, let's strain the broth we have on the other pot. The one that we've been keeping warm. Okay, carefully. All right, we did it. This is now boiling. I'm gonna lower the heat to medium low because I want this to reach a gentle simmer. We're gonna allow it to cook for an additional 25 to 30 minutes while the flavors intensify and the broth thickens up a bit more because it will continue to reduce. Do I have a hack for you or what? You're gonna love this. It's gonna make shredding the chicken a breeze. We're using the mixer, so if you have one, bring it out. You can also do this by hand. I've shown you how to do it before by simply removing the meat from the bones and taking it apart by hand. It is gonna be more time consuming, but it's fine, it's doable. I've always done it like this until recently. I did it on the mixer and it was amazing. Add all of the meat into the mixing bowl. We're gonna discard the bones and the skin. 
To season the meat, add salt to taste. I'm gonna be doing one teaspoon of kosher salt. Also do white pepper to taste. And now mix with a paddle attachment to break the chicken apart. How easy was this? I'm loving it. I tasted the chicken and it tastes so good. Now I'm gonna cover it up. That way it doesn't dry out while I heat up the tortillas for the tacos. To heat the tortilla, simply do it on a griddle, comal. You could even do it on a pan if you'd like. What we're doing here is making the tortillas pliable. That way when you roll the taquitos, you don't have any issues and they don't break. You do wanna avoid getting them too crisp. These are nice and hot on both sides. And look at that, they're flexible. All right, we're gonna remove them, place them inside a clean kitchen towel to keep them nice and warm. Keep the container closed. Continue the process until you have about 20 to 22 tortillas. I would say do 22 just to be on the safe side. I mean, if you end up needing more, you can always heat a couple more. We are ready to make some taquitos. By the way, whenever we add the ito at the end, it's usually a sweet name for things that we like, and in this case, it means little taco. Take a tortilla, because we're gonna start molding these. Keep them covered, you wanna keep them nice and hot. Take some of the chicken, place it right in the center. Actually, not in the center. On the edge of the tortilla, take the edge, place it over the chicken, and then roll until you reach the opposite end. Now, do you see this little flap? Take a toothpick and insert it right in the center. And just do another one. Take the edge and cover the chicken, then roll all the way until the end. Take this flap and make sure it stays right in the center. That way, they don't open up. Look at this beautiful stack of taquitos. In the end, I ended up making 33. It really depends on the size of the tortilla and also how much chicken you put in the middle. All right, enough chatter, let's get frying. Place a large pan over medium heat and add a generous amount of avocado oil enough for pan frying. Remember, your safe temperature for pan frying is 350 degrees Fahrenheit. The oil is hot. Now place the tacos into the oil. Just like that. When the underside becomes golden brown, nice and crispy, flip it so the other side does the same. Remove them from the oil when both sides have that gorgeous golden color and are crispy. Now do the same with the rest. Look at this consomme. It has been simmering away as soon as it was ready. All I did was turn down the heat even more to the lowest setting, that way it stayed nice and warm. And look at that consistency. I'm gonna taste for salt. It's almost there. We need, I'd say half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Mmm, this is so good. Oh my goodness, I'm excited. We're not gonna remove the pot from the stove because we want the broth to stay nice and warm. All right, let's assemble the tacos, come on. To start, arrange a nice bed of shredded cabbage at the bottom of the plate for the tacos to rest in. Then take the tacos. Very important, remove the toothpick. All right. And then rest the tacos on the edge of the plate. Just like that. And the amount per person really depends on the person. I usually will have four 
per serving. What about you, Nelson? Six, eight, I don't know, probably. When he has eight, that tells me that he really enjoys them and he really does. Now take sour cream or Mexican style cream. I prefer Mexican style cream, but you can use either or. Drizzle it over the tacos and be as generous as you'd like. Here comes the styling part of this dish. We're gonna take a little more cabbage and just lay it at the bottom of the tacos to kind of cover like so. Now take a generous amount of the pickled red onions and make another layer right above the cabbage. I also diced avocados and just place them strategically where you know it's gonna look nice. I'm gonna do a nice strip of cheese this time. I'm not gonna just sprinkle it everywhere. I want accents. We are almost there. Take three slices of tomato and place them on there as well. Beautiful. I think it looks gorgeous. Now let's do the consomme. What you wanna do is add a generous amount of the consomme, that way they kind of bathe in it. I am getting hungry by the minute. And I'm adding it on the sides, that way the top looks nice and pretty. I wanna sprinkle some lime juice to the broth. Just like that. My mouth is watering. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because I am. I'm gonna try to get as much as I can on this taco. Let's do this. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Every time you take a bite, you wanna drown the taco into the broth so everything combines beautifully. Mmm. Mmm. This is amazing. Let's get some of that broth. I have to say the onions are unbelievable. They add so much to this. Mm. I can actually taste the oregano and the onions as well. It is just layer after layer after layer of flavor. It's so good. I really hope you try this recipe at home. Come back and let me know how it went down in the comment area. Also, don't forget that you can follow me on all of my social media platforms. All right, until the next one.